the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. And as we turn away from the living God as the central point of our very lives for each man, woman, and child in this nation, so did morality fall away. And as man became immoral in this country, many amendments had to be added to the Constitution to adjust itself to the ways of mankind and to those decisions of man that freedoms may still be afforded to those who are of equality to another man. As the amendments were added, lawyers became the sole powers behind the interpreters. So only they can interpret the Constitution in the way that they do, which means that was consolidation of power, and that power was abused and misused over and over and over and over again. Until men would suppress others and hold others in contempt and blackmail still others. As they did this, more corruption was born. Now the system exists by itself and men are elected to serve the system. The system no longer serves man. The system enslaves man and man serves the system. I hope that you can see that. So mankind did just what the founding fathers who believed in God warned about. They said, if society becomes immoral, they won't worship God nor know about it. And if this happens, a great evil will sweep this nation. And all of what they fought so hard to establish will live on its own outside of mankind. And then mankind will serve it. It will no longer serve mankind. So now that brings us to today. What do you see? Do you see the Constitution serving mankind? Do you see all the articles and the letters and the rule of law serving mankind? Or do you see mankind serving it? See, it is mankind who walks around with a great fear of these things. It is mankind who is fired and hired, elected and put out from said positions for the rule of law and the Constitution and all the articles. And the three great houses, ruling houses that we have in America, People serve them. They really don't serve the people anymore. Why? Because of a loss of morals. How did that happen? Because people stepped away from godly ways. It was mandatory that people read the Bible at one time. That God always be part, although there was separation of church and state, which, by the way, was very important, so that no evil person could come in there and begin to manipulate and indeed rule everybody by his or her faith. That will be other than Christianity. There were direct notes, and it was well-intentioned, the system was, but the system is different now. See, we have to have the right history, not this made-up theoretical history, the right history, so that you can see the proper components, the origins of all these things. I mean, if we have to go back, way back to 1200 B.C., then so be it. We have to look at Alexander's kingdom. We have to look at the, uh, the statements of the philosophers of ancient Greece, the Persian Empire, the reason it mutated and fell. If we have to re-examine Solomon's rule and see the influence that spread all over the world, if we have to examine the 538 BC act of the end of the Babylonian captivity, the change of power that took place at the same time, the acts of King Darius, as also mentioned in the Bible, true history, so that we can see what we see now, because in the capital of this nation of America, you see the representation of every nation this country is. This country is Egypt, it is Greece, it is Rome, it is right there. You have the obelisks, you have the root, you have the cathedrals, you have the seat that is made, you have everything. It is pulled right here. You're in the middle of it. And of all the philosophers in the world, America has become the seat of quite a few things. We are the chair. We are the seat of something. And we sat that down ourselves. That began near 1947. And we're not talking about conspiracies. We're talking about what man has backed up and noted himself. Like if you go in these places and take pictures of plaques, you'll see their statements. You'll see the statements they make. you see it with your own eyes. You'll see their banner and why they stand. But then you guys will watch politics and you get yourself involved in that so much that you become emotionally compromised. You're ready to judge that which is already judged. You're ready to, to condemn that which is already condemned. 
take a step back. Never operate by your wounds, but we're going to have those heal. We can't cover them up anymore. Again, God said wounds make the whole head sick. You know what that means? You're not thinking right when you're wounded. You're not. You're going to have outbursts. And if you keep them, you're going to be held accountable. That's exactly what the Father says. You keep a wound when Jesus said that you would be healed from them, when the Father said you would be healed with them. If you resist the healing of those wounds, they're going to cause you a great penalty. The Lord is clear in His Word. We don't always discuss the clarity of His Word. But in case you didn't notice, everything has turned quite serious now. Folks, we're going to get into these things. If these are missed topics. We're going to have to go over some things. I hope and pray that all of us are strengthened so that we don't look away and hide our heads in the sand from what's going on, nor become emotionally compromised by what we see, but can always be sober and stand on the pillar of Christ, knowing that we shall not be moved, not being affected emotionally by politics or any other man-made thing or beastly thing, but that we may understand the truth of all things. The Father will present us the truth of light and darkness. That means we're going to see light and darkness does not mean you're going to operate by it. Once you see light and darkness, and you have seen it. And if the Lord can entrust you with that, he'll add to you much more. Then you'll have a full discernment as trusting on him. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? If you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.